Good morning everybody. A little bit of chaos here. First night in our tiny house slash chalet was comfortable. Um, it was 60 some degrees in here this morning. Uh, right now it's 72 according to this thermometer. Let's see what we have up here. Now I'm starting to doubt my weather station. Although it is sitting on the fridge which probably is cooler. It says 68 up here, and it says 75 outside, and I did fix the clock. It's 10.45 in the morning. Um, it was uh, in the th mid to high 30s last night. I don't know, because I forgot and I left this outside, so I could only go by my phone weather app and then subtract 7 to 10 degrees and estimate from there. Um... And then by the time I got out to the trailer this morning, I uh, obviously was warming up. So anyway, this is showing 68 over here. Just about the same height as over here in the corner, which is 72. So I don't know how to calibrate that. One of the two is probably off. But it's comfortable in here. Anyway, we had our first night in here. And uh, it was way better than the trailer, which is cold and uninsulated. So this will be our home now. We're trying to make the best of it. Hey guys, Troy from the do-it-yourself world and the off-grid project. And I am busy at work out behind the wood shop. I forgot to tell you while I'm at it the other day, a friend of mine helped me haul over some metal and a cabinet which will go in the wood shop and some roofing which I will use for the chicken tractor to there's some lightweight aluminum which I will close in three walls on the chicken tractor and put a roof on it'll be ultra light and very stable and safe for the birds and the rest is going to be used to enclose my wood storage area behind the wood shop now I have been sorting out my wood into the various conditions. Here's wood that's still sopping wet. And here's wood for different various projects like big sheets and stuff or things that are too light or dry rotted. Uh, boards I haven't got to yet. You may remember this was filled to the roof. And I'm sorting all the wood out. I've got wood set up for chicken coop. Uh, siding. I've got wood for projects like um, birdhouse and this one is full of wormholes so it's going to be great for different projects. So and then of course my pallets are going here and then when I'm done sorting all this out hopefully before it rains I'll have to put in some shelves in here and then frame this in and then close it for the winter to keep my wood from getting wet. But anyway um, some of the boards are dry and some are sopping wet still even after all this time under this roof which surprises me but I guess that is how it is so over here now I'm framing in for my our herb bed I'm ugh, the flies are terrible today they keep just landing right on me I have started sorting out pieces for framing to frame in the herb garden and cover it with plastic for the winter and hopefully it'll be like a mini greenhouse uh, it's gonna be five feet five feet tall on the sidewalls and then hopefully I can extend the growing season of the herbs because we use them heavily in cooking so the idea here is that the this wall and that wall which is the north side which will be the back wall will be the load-bearing walls of the roof and they'll be five feet high and then the roof is going to come up to a sharp peak in the middle so I'll have room to walk in the middle but very low ends at five feet high over here and there and then just a peaked roof so I won't have to worry about so much snow load um, well I was looking at this roof very steep peak and that gave me the idea there's no real snow load on that roof because of the slope. 
and uh, with the plastic sheets that'll help a lot. So I'm hoping to get it framed in today and then I can use tarps as needed until I can afford to get proper plastic. But at least for now we'll take all of our plants that I'm trying to save and keep them in this area. And that's so much better than hauling them back and forth all the time. So that's the plan. Alright guys, there's one wall so far. This is pretty much it. It's just going to hold plastic sheets and stop the uh, plants from freezing. So it's just five foot high and going to slope up steeply. I could have actually gone a little bit shorter on the sidewall, but it's done now. I could have gone four feet easily. But anyway, there's that. And then um, I'm going to put, I put a board across the bottom here. I'm going to put a board across the top all the way across and tie it in nicely. And then I'll probably have two thinner strips across the middle for uh, bracing for the plastic. So it's going to be really thin strips and two pieces along the middle. And that'll allow maximum sunlight, but yet keep the plastic from flapping and ripping in the, in the winter wind. Um, it's pretty sheltered back here though. We are back behind the house, so it shouldn't be too big of a problem. Anyway, uh, I've got to find a tripod that works for this heavy, heavy camera. Yeah, I don't even know if this has a tripod mount. Yeah, it does. But it's a heavy camera. So um, let me see what I can figure out. And maybe I'll let you see what I'm doing here and there as I go. But right now it's going to take me some time digging out five more uprights. Because the, uh, I've used three 2x4s and two 2x2s. Two I'm using what I've got. Uh, scrap lumber. So let's see what I can dig out over here. By the way, it's 87, 88 degrees, and that's no joke. It is hot out there. After being near freezing last night, we have almost 90 degrees today. It is really hot. It's amazing the temperature swings we have here. That, I think, is because it's the sandy soil. Anyway, I just wanted to show you the temperature. I have that in the chalet, our new tiny house. The time is correct and the date is adjusted. Well guys, there's another wall. Partially completed. Um, I don't have enough 12 foot stuff for the top plate. And I'm closing off the north wall because obviously there's no sun coming from the north. Only from the south. And I'll probably insulate that wall like I did in New York to keep the uh, you know, just help reduce heat loss that, that little bit. And I have some junk foam insulation that was in the garage that had been used by mice that I would never use in any clean environment, so it's perfect for here. I left it out in the rain to wash it off in the last few weeks, and then uh, I'll use what, what I have up in here for insulating in between these boards. Now I'm going every three feet apart, and there was a seam between the boards. That's the um, treated plywood that was the, the deck here originally. So I'm putting it to good use here. And uh, yeah, close that wall off. And it's going to be pretty nice, I think. And then I've got to tie these two walls in and then bring a, a roof on here. And that's the tough part because I don't have anything that's going to fit this 12 foot span. So. Um, I've obviously got to put in my three middle pieces and then I'm going to just tie them in with a board, uh, whatever I can come up with. Uh, I think I have one 12 footer. It's a wider board that I'll put up on the top to tie that in with. And then this is a little bit of a chipmunk proofing. That little spacer on there. and. I'm going to run that all the way around. It might even come up a couple inches higher all the way around. And then I may even put a couple inches of chicken wire along the bottom to stop the rodents from just going in. Now they're also trying to crawl under. Over in the back side there's a hole that I plugged up. And um, I'm going to have to run chicken wire along the ground here to prevent them from getting underneath. But, you know, that's how it is here. But I will rodent proof it and uh, do it up nice and right and good. Um, looking good though, the herb bed is really, really good. 
So this should extremely greatly extend the growing season at least, you know, into another month or so. At the very least, um, things are going to start dying. Some things will survive. So we'll see how it goes. Right now I'm going to attempt to put on a plate uh, supporting these two ends together. So this is going to be fun. This one's very crooked, so bear with me a minute. I've got to bring this one in the line. Just hold it somewhat. I've got to try to get this one straight, so don't fight me a minute. I'll come over there and straighten it when I get there. Okay. Now, I'll come over and put this one there. Thank you very much. That's all I need. Now I can put the middle ones in. Starting to look like a structure now, guys. Pretty cool. The roof is going to be the tough part. Um, this is the size. This is actually two feet bigger, I think. Was it 10 by 12 or 12 by 12? This is almost the same size as what I had in pine bush. I didn't realize how big this was until I started putting the walls up. Wow. Now I've got to put the piece down on the bottom and that'll tie it in all these boards like I did here and stop the rodents from coming through so these right now are not fastened to anything and then I'm going to come along with a framing nailer and toenail all them in as well right now I'm just using some screws to get the structure together and uh, I'm using one screw at every joint and then I'm going to use a, a nail at every joint for uh, strength and then toenailing in all the way around for strength but the boards tie it in nicely as well so, anyway, I've got to cut some boards for down across this end, and then I've got to work on the door, the front door area. But there's that wall done. And then, of course, I have to put um, cross bracing, some pieces across to stop the plastic from uh, ripping to shreds in the wind. I'm putting together the roof with heavy heavy pine boards that are actually two inches by over four inches 
real 2x4s. Problem is, my saw won't cut a real 2x4. It wasn't designed to cut that deep. So, here's the solution. I'm finished with the sawzall. Wow, I love that smell. So in this all is future firewood. Oh. Great stuff. Or goes in the bonfire. So this will be one of the main support frames for the roof. Now because the the structure itself is really flimsy, I have to count for snow loads, so the roof has to be solid. So I'm gonna have three heavy duty uprights, one in each end and one in the middle, to support the weight of the roof. Then I've got a Somewhere around here. Oh, I'm standing on it. I have a solid 12 foot cross piece for the center of the roof. Unfortunately, it's a little bit bent, but there's nothing I can do about that. I hope it's not going to give me too much trouble. So, the peak pieces are going to go together. I got them over here, actually. Let me grab the camera. What I've done is stacked up pallets till I got the height and the peak that I wanted. So there's the peak. I measured out where my 12 foot walls were and I measured to where I got the slope that I wanted using pallets. And then I've got, these are going to join together and be uh, nailed and screwed together. And then a heavy duty real 2x4 will run underneath that all the way across uh, underneath every single rafter set all the way across from one side to the other. This is the only way I figured that I'll be able to put this together alone with this extremely heavy lumber. This is very, very heavy stuff. So the only way I'm gonna do it is to put up a uh, stand, putting this in the air with three heavy duty supports going from that beam straight to the ground. And then I'll, I'll put together my rafter sets and then set them up over that uh, main beam and then after that I'm going to have to come in and tie them in across the bottom because otherwise I won't be able to get it over that. So it's a little bit um, complicated but it's the only way I can figure that I'll get this done alone uh, out here with this heavy heavy wood. Now these are also quite thick. Okay, I'm going to have the outer pieces will be very thick and then the um, so I'll have three thick sets on the out outside and I'll have uh, two, three, four of the one by sixes. Actually it's a little bit more than one by six. So should be alright. I think it's going to hold the snow load just fine. There's the middle support beam for the roof. Dead center. It's going to be an upright dead center in the greenhouse. So that's a heavy duty piece right there. Hey guys, I got the peak on. I did not record it because I'll be honest, 
I didn't want to embarrass myself if I messed up and put that through the window of the chalet. So, uh, that's, that's why I didn't record it. Um, I popped together these pieces here. I put First I put on that tall end piece, 8 foot tall, and then I uh, put on these two cross braces and in the middle piece over here. And then I've got the 8 foot board here, and then I've got the peak on there. So that was my major thing. If we get a freeze, I need to have something to drape the tarps over. That was the big deal right now, something to get tarps draped over. Now, it's not a big deal to just finish putting the roof together. I might get the two ends done for tonight and then call it a night because it's getting late and I'm pretty tired. We already had dinner. But, yeah, it's about the same size greenhouse as I had in New York. I'm surprised. Um, really surprised. Anyway, uh, I'll get those pieces over here. I still have to get the middle piece for the roof over here and toenailed in. And then, uh, that'll give that a little bit more stability. And then from there, I'll put on the, uh, the, uh, rafters. I'll put at least... Two or four on tonight. Okay, I just toenailed in the centerpiece. Well, that's a pretty thick board. And it's uh, dead center on the greenhouse, which is cool. I can hang stuff from it in the future. That's a really thick, that's a big board. So now all the weight of the roof is transferred straight to the ground. Not under the walls of the building, but all the way to the ground. And this one I put long ways, so it transfers the weight to the 2x6 that's buried in the ground down here. The treated 2x6. Uh, so all the way to the roof goes straight on down. That's the way it's got to be. Now I feel better about snow load. Um, not that I'm going to leave any snow up here, but... At least now it's going to be stronger. So I'm going to put these two uh, ends on over here now. Not sure what I'm doing. Just hoping for the best. Framing now is going to be better. Let's have a look at that slope. Well, there's the slope of the roof. Now, I haven't cut the ends yet because I didn't know how long I need them. I am um, making this up as I go along, to be honest. Um, it's a pretty decent slope. I think we're going to be okay. Now, because I raised it up that 2x4 higher, my angle is off. So I'm going to have to recut the angle on that. I might have to take them down and recut that angle. But at least I see now what I've got going on. Also, that that backboard I think you can see it's it's right here it's warped in a bad way that upright but this is all I got to work with it is what it is 
I can probably try to straighten it out when I when I toenail in the rafters to the walls. Maybe I can try to push that out some. We'll see what happens. I'll end up doing that one last probably. So there's some we're you know pushing that in in the end once I get all the rafters up and toenail them in and try to push that straight. Everything else is pretty decent and straight except for that one right there. Now this is not square. This is just hanging open this end here. It's just hanging there. But everything else is pretty decent. Um, this is not a proper construction, so don't worry if, nothing, if it's not 100% absolutely perfect. It's close, it's good, and it's going to hold the plastic. So all it's got to do is hold plastic from flopping in the wind and stop the uh, plants from freezing. Well guys, actually I'm going to call it a night. I have to redo that cut and I'm really tired and sore. Um, I sorted all the all the wood in the wood shop today. I'll take you over and show you that in a closing scene here. But uh, that's not bad considering I had to sort every single thing out and go through about 20 pieces of wood for every one I had here. So um, that was quite a job. Um, we'll have some cross bracing this way, two across all the way around, and then. Uh, That'll stop the plastic from being ripped to shreds, hopefully. And I think we're going to have a greenhouse. Oh, the flies are trying to bite. I'm going to get right in there. All right, I'll take you over to the wood pile. I'm going to lay these down for the night and call it a night, and we'll pack it up. Well, quite a construction zone. All those pallets were, all these pallets were holding the wood spacing it out. I've got a lot to clean up. That's why I decided to call it a night right now. Um, I still just got a few pieces down there. I sorted out everything by uh, chicken coop wood, birdhouse wood and, and uh, special projects wood, heavy heavy duty wood. There's some birdhouse wood over there. Over here I got some special wood that I'm going to use inside the chalet. Um, there's some super heavy, heavy boards right here. Going to be beautiful when I plane it open. See the size of that? Thick. And this is going to make us a, um, a uh, end table slash bookshelf in the chalet next to the, uh, the, the couch. Our new tiny house, I should say. And then this piece here, so these will be used for that, for the big bookshelf. Here's a massive beautiful post that is really beautiful with the uh, the wormholes in it and the uh, rough cut that deserves something special and then uh, here is pieces that I'm going to be using for rafters so everything's sorted out I'm going to be uh, cutting it close when I'm done here I, I won't with the projects I got going on. So we'll see if I got enough wood. Alright guys, I'm going to clean up. Quite a mess back here. Well, building the greenhouse for the uh, almost off-grid homestead. Troy from the do-it-yourself world and the off-grid project. Good night.